lucky for us, we have two knowledge keepers here to share a welcome. Most of us are visitors here. And it is really, well, it is a primary obligation of all of us as visitors to care for this land and to come to know the beings that compose it. And we're really grateful to hear the creek in the background, thick with spring freshette. I'm really grateful for the cooler weather, <laughs> making fire season seem farther away than it probably is. And I'm really happy to have Pam and Grouse here with us today. And I'm going to hand it over to them. Thanks for joining us. So good morning, everyone. My name is Pamela Barnes. My ancestral name is Chuchuwaskit, which means the coming of a storm or the coming of change. And thank you for the land acknowledgement. And it's my privilege to welcome everyone to our traditional territory. And in doing that, I want to first share with you the difference between a land acknowledgement and a welcoming to our traditional territory. Because we as Seelks people are often asked to do a land acknowledgement. And I want to just share with you the protocols of that. A land acknowledgement is recognizing your host. And it's like going to your neighbor's home for dinner you would recognize them as your host and thank them. You wouldn't though, you wouldn't ask them to recognize themselves and thank themselves as being the host. So a land acknowledgement is a responsibility of the guest, not the host. And so that's, you know, as we move forward in these new relationships, um, something that we need to understand the whys and the what's behind our actions. So it's become, you know, on the to-do list when you have an event, land acknowledgement, welcome, you know, <laughs> and we check those boxes. But it's time for us to have a deeper understanding of what those mean and what they're really about. And so that's what a land acknowledgement is. And it's the responsibility of the guest, not the host. Um, and that being said, not everybody understands that all those except for the Seals people are guests on these lands. Because not everyone is aware of the true history. Nothing has ever happened in these last 200 years to change that ownership, for lack of a better word, um, of these lands or jurisdiction. We've never sold these lands. We've never traded them. We've never given them away. We've never given up jurisdiction and we've never negotiated anything. And so that's the reality, whether people are aware or not, and whether or not the government has ever decided to include true history in the curriculum. Um, that's the reality. Um, so in moving on to welcoming you to our traditional territory. So for us as Seals people, all of these lands the dirt itself is made up of the blood and the bones of our ancestors for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. For us, it's all sacred. And in our sacred laws, our teachings, our um, chapti, our creation stories, describe our relationship to these lands and it's more of borrowing these lands 
from future generations. And that's very different than the ideas that have come in the last 200 years that speak of human relationship to land as one of ownership. Those two ideas are very different. So if I use this necklace, if I own this necklace, I can sell it, I can trade it, I can give it away. It's mine, I can do whatever I want. I can take really good care of it, I can just toss it aside. It's mine, I can do what I want. But if I borrow this, everything about that relationship changes. I can't sell it, trade it, give it away. It's not mine to do that with. And even more importantly, there's an expectation that when I leave it or return it, that it's at least in the same condition I found it, if possible, better. So it's with this understanding of our sacred responsibility to these lands, to the waters, to all of the life that it contains, that we first welcomed others to our traditional territory. And it's with this understanding that today I welcome you to the traditional territory of the Sioux people, the traditional unceded and currently occupied territory of the Sioux people, with the reminder that none of us, including ourselves as Sioux people, are doing the best job that we can to care for the land, the water, all of the life it contains for all future generations of life, including all of our children, all of our grandchildren, all of our great grandchildren, and so on and so forth. My hope is that you will be inspired to go beyond thinking about it, talking about it. We need to start taking meaningful action to change how we are being on this planet. Lynn. <coughs> Why? Good morning. Um, I'd like you guys to stand up. Remove your hats, please. Why Limlam Kulum Chutan Khan Wist? Tali Hasti Spoos can allot the Silko Quest. A hats called Kultum Stamapana Silko Quest. Tali Hast Kilia Yat Sweet. Why Apana Wai Tihukulumi Tumhula? Why Chkitski his capes? Uli he is Naxil, who we are he kill Makmakuk Skaus Tihok, Marimston, the Sitten, Yayat Stimmage, Kulstum, the Hast, Nikwaha. Up and away, he kill many him, he chichwiha, Talin, Hastin, Uli is Kakaka, Tali Hast, White Kitchi is Kapit, Yayat Stimmage. Lala can limp Yayat Chiapala Lutz with Kshanumtu Nikhui Lutz with Kshanumtu. He squished Kaninum to Tan Kaitsen in Tana Hill to get milk, Takam Ksi, Pichichamala, Nakam's open Kstakam Sees and Am Ima with Nakhsta Tupa. Ustali <laughs> 
Uskuu kaamtaunin on ikäisten kulaukset. Kaikki menin pitäisikin tuon kulaukset. Kaikki sinä mimati täytyypä. Mutta ne on uja antsitsemalla antsemadultaan täytyypä. Thank you, Creator, for allowing me to say a few words and a little prayer. You know what, this, <clears throat> these things we're going to be doing today is uh, very, very good to see, I see you know, on the agenda, what's going on and it makes makes me, uh, makes my heart light to know that this is going on. You know, at this time of year, our people are going to go on the land and, and gather medicines and food and all the stuff that we've been doing for thousands of years. We're still here and we're still doing that. You know, um, we take care of the land and the land takes care of us. It, it, it's not one way or the other. At this time of year, you know, um, I say that uh, between me and her, we got six kids and 16 grandchildren and one great grandson. So, with that being said, we teach them uh, to respect the land and to respect everything that comes from the land because we uh, we get our food from the land, we get our medicines from the land. When we pray, we pray seven generations ahead that the water still be clear, that the trees still be here and the animals because we walk hand in hand with nature. And from, you know, knowing and not knowing are two different things. To know that we should be able, we should take care of the land is uh, showing that we're gonna continue to do that. But not knowing and, and just take our land um, for, for, for granted is, is not right. But anyway, I'm glad to see everybody here. We all got here today uh, safely, and I hope we go home safely to wherever it is, across the street or across the valley, up and down the valley, or wherever, wherever you come from. Safe journeys home. My name is Kenenum Dumtan Koitstens. My wife's name is Chuchuaskit. And uh, thank you for having us here this morning. Lemnum. Mutu. With every uh, opening I do, you guys can sit down. <coughs> I just like being bossy. <laughs> What's the Okanagan Lake famous for? <laughs> this is participation. <laughs> Ogo Pogo is his nickname, <laughs> or her nickname. The real, the real name. Is, uh, you guys give her a shot too. If I don't see you guys speaking, I'm going to point you out. Nachachaitk. 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 First part of the word is chacha, sacred. Second part of the word is itk, water. Sacred being of the water. Ogopogo came to be in 1924 through the Kelowna Board of Trade. And my inter interpretation of Ogopogo, come, spend your money. <laughs> <laughs> One more. A simple word for water. Yeah. My language is uh, siu. Try that, siu. When I break that up, you'll understand why it's so important. First part of the word is siu, human siu out of a cup, out of the cup of your hand. The last part of the word, siu, is the sound that animals make when they lap the water. So it's humans and animals together, not one more important than the other. And that's how we look at our, our, our temihu. Temihu is all living things. We get along with all living things. And I'm so glad to see so many people here. Thank you very much. We'd like to be able to stay for the day, but we have another date with um, 
with uh, Balsam School down on at uh, Rotary Marsh and we have Nahahai in the back seat right now and so <laughs> we're doing a fire and water event with them um, where we talk about water and we talk about uh, our traditional use of fire in looking after these lands and an art activity and things that uh, we do with um, um, earth pigments we have delved we were doing these exercises for quite a few years and then one day I thought we're doing this and we're talking about water <laughs> and we're using these nasty nasty paints <laughs> you know and so I was like huh <laughs> so we started on a journey to learn about going back to our traditional knowledge about earth pigments and, and using those to make paints and things. So we're to the point where we actually can do it now. So, <laughs> so, so that's where we're headed. So we'll be thinking about you, but we'll be working with the wee ones today. So, <laughs> thank you. so thank you for having us, but we're going to have to scoot. So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. Before you both leave, I'd like to give you these ambiguous tokens of appreciation. Awesome. <laughs> they awesome. are mm. stuffed with milkweed fuzz. Oh, cool. And cool. made from old clothing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Thank you so much. I like it related to my name. Raindrops, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, Lim Lim. <laughs> So thanks everyone for coming. Um, my name is Estrida. Um, I'm so grateful to be here today and with you all. Uh, I'm not going to give a very large introduction. Uh, I'm so grateful to uh, Pamela and Graves for doing the real introduction. <laughs> um, but I do want to uh, just say a few housekeeping things before we get going. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge that this event has been supported by ASLI, which is the Association for uh, the study of literature and environment and um, Rina and Maddie and I got a little bit of a grant that sort of kicked this off and the Faculty of Creative and Critical Studies, uh, Bryce is the Dean in case you don't know him, <laughs> also chipped in and uh, Coralie from the Schnepp-Weefs Museum is also here supporting it so we're so happy for that. Danny in the back there is also part of our organizing committee so if anyone has any questions, you can tap Danny or Rena or Maddie or myself or Coralie. Um, and thanks to everyone, to all the volunteers, giveaway volunteers who are helping out at Rego. Uh, that's Australian registration, I mean, um, and the catering. Um, so thanks so much for all your work. It's what makes it um, happen. So there's a loo, a porta potty. That Alu, I think that's British. So that I, I'm trilingual. Um, uh, you can use that. There's a hand washing station around the other side, but there's also some sanitizer over there on the table if you need. And there's a bush all around us as well. So um, uh, anything else important housekeeping wise? Lunch will be delivered. So there will be sandwiches for lunch. Um, hopefully everybody got a sketchbook and your choice of sketching implement. Um, and a name tag. Um, if you don't, you can see Charlotte or Judy. They're, they've squirreled those things somewhere. And uh, I'm really looking forward to spending the day with you. I'm, I think I'm going to stop talking and hand it over to Coralie for the next activity. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let them leave, yeah? yeah? And we don't have to talk over the... And there is coffee and tea and snacks that will just be there all day. So just go and help yourself as you want. And so we are known as the Okanagan people, but that name came to us from a misunderstanding in the 1700s 
Now there have uh, there have been white people. We were we were not uh, unaware of them. They were popping up and down throughout the states. But the first actual documented white man was named David Stewart, and that was in 1810. One day, David and his Northwest Company, he uh, he had this bright idea to come up to us, a group of us, and say, "Hey, what are you?" And we responded, "Oh, Supanakain." So, in our language, when you ask us what, we're assuming you're asking me, "What do I do? What is my job?" So sukunake, when you break that word down, the S comes from the word skailuk. Uk means to carry, and kain comes from the root word chesia kain, which is your head. So it means carrying a message to the top. And that could be to the top of a mountain, to the top of the lake, to the top of another person's head. No more questions were after, and pretty soon sukunake got butchered into ukunake to Okanagan. And this became the Okanagan Valley, and we, the Okanagan people. And that's okay, I dig the name Okanagan because we all have a message to carry. However, had the gentleman asked, who are you? Then we would have said, see you. So, this is a really cool word because again, it's a lot of words mixed in. The S part comes from the word Skyluk, meaning people. Yil, this is important. Yil means to weave. And we're not talking about textiles, but we're talking about weaving. We're talking about how we interweave ourselves with the land, with animals, and with other people. And the part at the end, that's a command word, meaning, damn it, you do it. <laughs> so, we are the people who weave. And so, as part of our four food chief story, we are somewhat aware of, we know that the, the bear, the, the Saskatoon berry, the root, the fish, they gave up everything that they needed um, so that humans could survive. And so when we talk about that yield, that weaving, what our philosophy is, is that too often human and nature are separate. We're in two different categories. But when we talk about weaving, we are interlocked. We are very much a part of the chaos that is nature. And we're at the top of the food chain, not to claim dominion over nature. And it's not even um, a master-servant relationship. It is a reciprocating relationship. It is a relationship of give and take. Because as humans, we share our DNA with plants, animals. We are made up of water. We are made up of electricity and minerals. And so when we say that we have been here since time immemorial, we're talking about how we were still sleeping in the soil when we were full pulled out of it. A stole skyluk, meaning torn from the earth. And so we, um, for as long as there have been animals and plants, we have been here. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a sketch journaling. I have ADD and I'm, I'm shite at taking notes. Um, I often will write things that more or so less interest me, but then I'm gonna doodle. And then I will go back to those doodles and then I'll remember, oh yeah, that's what we were talking about. And um, so the sketch, sketch journals that you have with you, what I want us to do is take notes from all the fabulous people you're gonna hear from today, but also, Take notes from nature. The nature is going to be talking to you. You're going to see birds. You're going to see trees. You're going to see how the light dances off the leaves. How the little bugs in the sunlight look like fairies. And it's amazing. Nature is a beautiful place. And maybe even there's like a feeling that comes out of you too when you're in the forest. Maybe that's your um, self-preservation instinct saying, oh shit, I'm in a bush. <laughs> But draw that, write that down. <laughs> so uh, that's what we want to do today. So uh, what I'll be doing is I'm going to be in my little tent back there. I'll show you our cool fishing trap that we have because we're next to the creek. And it's getting up to the time when we're going to start catching those kokanee. And so the little fishing weird that I brought and other uh, implements of fish murder, uh, <laughs> you can all come and take a look. Yeah, so that's where I'll be. I'm done. Thank you. So um, why don't we grab a coffee or a snack if you need. We can congregate over at your traps, the, behind there at the river, and get make sure you have your sketchbook and your chosen implement of writing. And we can start there and then we'll spend some time uh, just dispersing and find doing that. I'm not going to repeat it. Coralie <laughs> said it way better. <laughs> and then we're going to congregate again to begin Dennis's workshop 
at um, what's the time? Let's say at eleven o'clock. Yeah, at eleven o'clock. Okay. So now is the time to sort of get to know this place. Yeah. Let's get intimate with nature. <laughs> that could be taken various ways. Yeah. Um, so and <laughs> let's try them all out. Um, so let's but let's go look at the traps for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my happy little tent. Um, this here is called a Suchliken. Can we say that? A Suchliken. Suchliken. Yeah. Because she leaking. No. <laughs> a lot of holes. That's okay. <laughs> Suchlik. Yeah. So this is a fishing weir and it's made entirely out of red willow, deer skin, and pine pitch. And this is a great way to talk about how the sexes work together within our culture. We are a matriarchy. We are matrilineal. We're in charge of export and import and negotiations, government, education. We have to distribute it, make sure everybody gets an equal portion, otherwise you're going to hear about it on the Facebook community page. <laughs> <laughs> But this is, uh, my mom grew up doing this, my, my uncle, well my uncle's got these pretty big ham slappers, so him and my cousin Sadie, what they like to do is just slap fish out of the water, so, I don't know, that's this funny image in my head, that my uncle just, like a bear to, <laughs> um, I use this for berry picking. And we were the best at rope making. Our biggest import when we traded was our paint and our rope. And rope is king, like if you live on the land, which we all did, you're going to need rope. You're going to need rope to make your tools, you're going to need rope to make your home, you're going to need rope to make your clothing. So if you guys feel it, you'll see that um, you'd think it would be really rough and unpleasant, but it's actually very soft and really nice. So we could make blankets out of it, but uh, it takes a lot of time, and of course it's going to be, it's going to cost you. <laughs> Just like that, his wish brought the wind back to life, and he was mad. <laughs> he picks up Coyote and a whirlwind and hucks him across the valley. And he almost flies over a cliff, but some hemp that was growing there, they grab onto him. The one sister throws him under the lip of the cliff, and the other sister undresses him and throws the clothing on the ground. The wind comes angry and says, where is he? And the hemp sisters, they said, oh man, you should have seen it. He went right over, he cracked his head on a, on a rock and he just floated down. He is absolutely 100% dead.
I'm Dennis. Dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> Malicious. <laughs> Beautiful, but let's um. I'm Madeline. Oh, okay. Malicious. Oh, right. And then we say, um, Madeline Malicious. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. I'm Madeline Malicious. Go! Madeline Malicious. <laughs> Most modest. Most, Most modest. Beautiful. Uh, magnificent Morgan. <laughs> magnificent <laughs> Morgan. Terrific Taylor. Terrific Taylor. Yes, done. Yippee! Yes, <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Emily Effervescent. Good Emily Effervescent. Uh, Joanne Joyful. Joanne Joyful. Coralie Calcified. Calcified. Test Thoughtful. Test Thoughtful. Charlotte Courageous. Charlotte Courageous. Aaron Eccentric. <laughs> Aaron Eccentric. <laughs> bias. <laughs> Kaylin Cathartic. Kaylin Cathartic. David Dynamic. David Dynamic. <laughs> Gabrielle Grateful. Gabrielle Grateful. Judy Judicious. Judy Judicious. <laughs> Raging Rena. <laughs> Raging Rena. Oh, yeah. Amira Ambitious. Amira Ambitious. Harshada Happy. Harsha Happy. <laughs> Maddie Malignant. Maddie <laughs> Malignant. Uh, Natalie Naturalistic. Natalie Naturalistic. Ready, rich. Ready, rich. <laughs> um, Danny Dainty. Danny Dainty. Liz Lazy. Liz Lazy. Davy Determined. Davy Determined. Me Noble. Me Noble. Estrida. Astral. Astrida Astral. <laughs> Chubby Changeable. Chubby Changeable. Beautiful. Okay, great. Now, your name has a sound. Okay, so I'd like you to think of a sound. Okay, think of your name. Think of that adjective. Think of an abstract sound that probably uh, you haven't heard before. <laughs> it's a unique sound that's just, uh, you know, coming from your body. For example, <sighs> that's the name of Dennis the da Dangerous, okay? <laughs> so, Uh, have a like, call and response. So we listen to the sound first. Don't jump in. Don't rush in. Really find the quality of that sound because in that sound, it's there's a distinctiveness in that. Okay. So let's have again with. Let's listen. Etc. 
a yeah. <laughs> beautiful sap, but a little bit um, uh, fragile. Mm. And we take that fragility because there's beauty in that. Okay. Beautiful. There's so much uh, something happening here. <laughs> it's dramatic. <laughs> Let's do it again. Now. One, two, three, go. It's dramatic, right? things are also wonderful isn't it yeah okay and it's attractive okay let's do it again I will help you I will help you okay one more time I will help you it's beautiful one did you go beauty okay Oh, that's a sound already. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Let's let's develop it. Oh. 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 Oh, 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 oh,
to rock. Wow, it's epic. Natura. Natura. Okay, one more time. Natura. Natura. Hey, now what we're going to do is I will point to the person and that person should create the sound. Let's begin with... So think, what, what's the, 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 the sound of um, a burning leaves as opposed to um, a burning house? Okay, now you've already uh, an aptitude for sound making. I would like to challenge you to think of water and fire as ideas in sound making. Okay. That's my sound. Did you, did you see that? Did you feel that? We're now removing ourselves from um, tentativeness. From when somebody did something, you were laughing. That's okay. But now, something happened when she was creating the sound. You're becoming more invested in the process. Beautiful. Whoosh! 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 Create that sound, recreate that sound using your body. There's a sound. Embody, embody the sound and the movement. The invitation is to become that sound in the movement. This is a fire. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hungry. You're fantastic. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure any of us knew what to expect, and maybe few of us expected this. And I hope I'm not alone in saying how much we enjoyed it. Amazing. So we do have some sandwiches. I ordered full vegetarian with some vegan and gluten free, and we got a lot of meat. So oh. <laughs> just to say, there are vegan and vegetarian sandwiches. So my only request is, if you aren't vegan or vegetarian, perhaps you could leave one of those to someone who is. If you'd like to go for a walk, it's about 10 minutes, sort of back the way you came to the Woodhaven Regional Park. And there are paths through the park if you want to just go for a walk on your own. And we'll congregate in about an hour here. Thank you so much everyone for being here and I'm so excited to share my stories with you. Uh, the first one I'm going to tell is my classic story. This is my favorite story that my mom told me. Um, every time we passed this huge white streak on the mountain. Looking all majestic. I want to look that cool. I want to be able to fly. I want him to see this. So he waited. <laughs> Etc. In our stories, they used to have queer characters, our traditional stories. They had stories about them, and um, but since residential school, colonialism, genocide, um, those characters have been taken out due to shame. And I don't think that's right. So I'm here and I'm putting these queer characters back into our stories. And um, this one is called Welcome Home. Badger was sick and tired of their local powwow. It was so gendered, men and women. Young Badger wanted to dance chicken at the powwow, but were too afraid to be the only one dancing chicken who is not clearly a man. They wanted to move to the city when they grew up so that they could be whoever they wanted to be. Every night, they had vivid dreams of dancing in the arbor. They could feel the jingles on their feet, the bustle on their back, and the feathers on their head. They could hear the pounding of the drum. Every morning, they cried because it was just a dream. One day, Badger's mom came into their bedroom in the morning and saw them crying. What's wrong, sweetie? I want to dance chicken at the powwow. There was a huge lump in their throat. Badger's mom didn't know what to say. You don't want to dance 
Uh, jingle or fancy? What about traditional? No, Mom. I don't. Chicken is for men, though. You're not a man. I don't think I'm a girl. I'm Two-Spirit. It took me a long time to, to tell people who I was and to even realize that there was an indigenous concept of being queer. I just didn't know till I was in my 20s. Like, I wish I knew it growing up. I could have been, um, I could have like, I guess, had people use the proper pronouns for me my whole life. My family would have like, been able to practice more, I guess. Thank you for being here with my tears. Um, yeah, so that's why I tell these stories and that's why I think they're so important. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky. You know how I feel Breeze drifting on by You know how I feel Why has he held um Iskel Hisquist and Huachin? I have so much love for the earth, the land and all its creatures. I want to savor its beauty. To admire the last speck of sunlight as it fades behind the mountains, I feel so lucky to exist right next to its powerful energy. A hug wrapped tight from the wind, a blanket made of moss, a shawl of fire, the heat from dancing down the grass. I want to watch the streams and creeks and rivers race my tears as gravity yanks at the finish line. But most of all, I want clean air, clean water, and clean land for the next generation of Creator's creatures. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. But I think the world will die in the hands of our children because what have we given them? The hands of colonialism has a chokehold on our resources, their leaders diseased by greed and endless desire. Water falls spilling out of our hands and into the mouths of our future kin, dirty and polluted. Pessimism, it clouds my brain while the sun scorches an entire city. I want to be hopeful. But all this pain that we've pummeled into the ground, it comes down and it pounds on my head. Every day I search for my purpose. But what finds me are only obligations, the responsibility of healing the land, healing the heads and hearts of others, connecting my people back to our land, back to our language, our ways. My native language, it comes from the creator and its creations itself. So you know it's fire. You know he joke Girisa and Ogiri is war in the Yoruba context. And immediately it's the, the picture of a wall that comes to mind and how walls are able to stand in the midst of fire, untouched by fire, unaffected by fire. And what comes to mind are the walls that Yoruba people build, of course, build their their homes with, you know. These are these are walls made from laterite, you know, laterite from clay which essentially did not burn because those walls were considered the most important Kamusta? And that is how are you in Tagalog in Filipino which is where I'm from. I'm originally from Manila, Philippines. I call it sometimes the belly of the beast because it is where everything seems to happen all the time. And if you've heard the latest international news it's not good things happening there right now. So a lot of my poetry actually thinks about the contrasts and the differences and also the intersections of two different countries that is sur surrounded and separated by an ocean. These lands and waters and I'm so grateful that you all came uh, and uh, I hope we can all continue these conversations in other ways and in the future. So that's just my thank you while I'm here. But now let's uh, open it up and have some chats and conversations. And if you have some questions, 
for particularly for Madeline or Rina or Taylor or Niyi. Um, now's a chance to ask them. And let's turn the mic off now. taking things down please finish any food exchange Instagram handles or whatever it is <laughs> <laughs> Instagram oh you have to escape the fire yeah nice to meet you oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.